There once was a cobbler named Twine, who was as poor as one can be. All he had were those shoddy clothes on his back, a pair of tattered moccasins on his feet, and a bag with a morsel of bread inside. He was living his life, wandering from one village to another and patching old shoes. One day, walking through a huge forest, Twine saw a destroyed anthill under a pine tree. Surely, a bear had done it, searching for ant eggs, as bears usually do in springtime. Poor ants were running around, carrying grains of sand and pine needles, trying to rebuild their home. Twine felt sorry for them, so he took off his cap and used it to gather the scattered pieces of the anthill in one place. When he was done, the mother ant climbed to the top of the anthill and said, Thank you, good man. If you ever need our help, we shall come to your aid. The cobbler just smiled, because what favor could those tiny creatures ever do? He bowed to them and took to his heels. After a not so short, but not so long time, Twain was passing through a green forest, humming, like forests do, and he saw another damage. There was a wild beehive in a tree hollow, and it was destroyed. Honeycombs were lying around, and honey was trickling down the tree trunk. For sure, some Ben has done mischief there as well. Twain began to help the bees. He gathered the scattered honeycombs to put them back in a tree hollow, and then patched a hole in the trunk with wax to stop the honey from pouring out. The queen bee came out of the beehive and said, Thank you, good man. If you ever need our help, we shall come to your aid. And once again, Twine just smiled, bowed down, and took to his heels. After a not so short, but not so long time, he found himself on a long dike between two huge ponds. Lots of wild ducks were swimming there, but the moment they saw Twine, they started to quack loudly, and then they hid themselves in the reeds. They knew that there were hunters who sometimes were walking on the dike and aiming at ducks and shooting them with their swift arrows. The cobbler stood on the dike and called out, Don't be afraid, Teals. I am not here to aim at you, but to admire you. Instead of weapons to kill you, I brought some bread to feed you. And he crumbled up some bread and dropped it into the water. A bunch of ducks swam out of the reeds. They picked up all the bread crumbs from the water and they were astonished to taste them because they had never eaten bread before. Finally, the eldest drake, a pretty bird with blue mirror-like feathers on its wings, said, Thank you, good man. If you ever need our help, we shall come to your aid because he didn't come to kill us, but to feed us. Twine smiled and thought, how could you ever help me? Could you swan a treat for me? Could you take a hill? But he bowed to them nicely and took to his heels. He walked on and on until he finally came to a land where a castle stood. And there was a tower in the castle and there was a maiden locked in the tower, and the maiden was guarded by a witch. And people passing the castle were talking to each other like this. If somebody married that maiden, she would be free from the witch. But to do that, one must complete two tasks and solve a riddle first. I could try that, says Twine. Only a fool could say that. Do you want to die? 
when someone volunteers and fails. The witch tears his head off. But Twain kept saying, I could try that. Better ones that you have already tried. Many knights and dukes and princes came here before. Nobody could do the tasks. Nobody could solve the riddle. And the witch had no mercy for any of them. They all ended up headless. But Twain kept saying, I will go there and take the chance. And the cobbler knocked on the castle door. Man or beast? Who's at my door? Tell me what you're coming for. I would like to marry the maiden who lives in your tower. First, there are two tasks and a riddle to guess. If you can do all, then the answer is yes. I will try, said Twine. So the witch let him in and led him to a chamber behind seven doors with iron bars in the window. And she said, In the morning, I'll be back. Meanwhile, do you see this sack? full of poppy seeds and sand, you must split the grains by hand. Do the task this very night, or else I will snap your head and make you dead. And the witch left the cobbler in the room, and she locked the seven doors. Twine sat down, scratched his head and thought, what a huge sack it is. And I'm supposed to separate all the poppy seeds from sand? A year wouldn't be enough to do it, and she gave me just one night. Oh, you're in trouble, Twine. Big trouble. Suddenly, he heard a strange scuffling from behind the window. The sound kept getting closer and closer, and then ants ran inside through the iron bars. There were thousands and thousands of them. It was an uncountable crowd of ants. Twine leaped to his feet and poured out all the grains from the sack. And the ants immediately got down to business. And they were working hard. And they kept goading each other. And they took the poppy seeds to the right and the sand grains to the left. And they were done by midnight. Then there was scuffling on the walls once again and the ants left the chamber through the window and returned home. Twine was overjoyed. He then called the empty sack, put it under his head and went to sleep. The sun had barely risen when the witch opened the seven doors and she couldn't wait to tear another suitor's head off. She entered the chamber and she saw one mount of poppy seeds, one mount of sand, and a cobbler stretching after a good rest. The witch was astonished, but she hid her feelings and just said, Now I have this task for thee. The girl had a golden key, but she went outside to bathe and she dropped it in the lake. Find it for me in the deep. Don't waste time, just go and leap. Fetch the key before the dawn, or else I will snap your head and make you dead. Twine went back to the ponds. He stood on the dike and he mused with a great musing, and he got worried with a great worry. How could he find the key? How could he know where the maiden has dropped it? Which pond she had bathed in? Could he know how abysmal the depths in the water were? Or what kind of treacherous eddies he could find? And he stood, and he wondered, and he counted. Suddenly a drake came out of the rushes and asked, What do you need, good man, our friend? I have to find the maiden's golden key she lost when she was bathing until morning, or the witch will tear off my head. Do not worry, good man, 
all of the teals will be diving, all of the fish will be searching. We shall fetch you the key. The rushes rustled, and all the teals swam out to the pond. The water churned, and all the fish dived right down to the bottom. After not that long, but not that short time, a tiny fish found the key in the depths. And then it gave the tea to a duck, and the duck gave it to the drake, and the drake took it to the shore and said, We have already found the golden key. There is no need to worry anymore, good man. Twine grabbed the key, thanked the drake, and ran straight to the witch. She was astonished, but she hid her feelings, and just said, Golden door and golden key, who will die soon, you or me? And she told Twine to follow her. They climbed 777 stairs until they reached the top of the tower. The witch unlocked the golden door with the golden key and they entered the chamber. There was a bench there and nine girls were sitting on it. They all looked exactly the same and their faces were covered with thick veils. And the witch said, Let us see if you win trials. Find your bride or your demise. Now you have no time to lose. Look at them, observe and choose. Find the right one in the nine and the tower girl is dying. You must guess till morning comes or else I will snap your head and make you dead. So Twine looked at the maidens and observed, searching for some detail that could tell him which one was the imprisoned one. But they were all exactly the same, just like white keys on a meadow. How could he recognize the right one? How could he guess? Now I will die for sure, thought the cobbler. Suddenly, bees came in, through the open window. They circled around the room, then they stopped above the last girl in line, and they formed a buzzing circle over her head. She is the one, cried Twine, and ran to the last maiden. And the girl sprang up, unveiled herself, and threw herself on the cobbler's neck, saying, You have liberated me, my dearest love. The witch saw that and changed into some bird right away. She fluttered and she flew away through the window, somewhere into the wild, and nobody has seen her since. Twine and the maiden of the tower soon hold their wedding and after a great celebration they settled in the witch's castle and they have been living there happily up to this day. <laughs>